Hi, we've got some of these Knightsbridge LED under cabinet lights in the kitchen. We've got quite a few of them, various different lengths. We've got some that are about 900 millimeters long. We've got this one that is 600 and then quite a few that are 300 and 400 millimeters long, depending on how long the cabinets are. And they've all been working really well for about four years now, except for this one. And this 600 millimeter one, I've had to replace every year because it keeps failing. Even though I'm buying it from a different supplier, it's obviously from a different batch and everything like that. But for some reason, this one keeps failing. And it's not like it's above anything that's generating heat. This one doesn't have the kettle or toaster or anything like that underneath it. Uh, so this one isn't subject to any weird conditions. It just seems to fail all the time. So I thought today we'd have a look and see what's actually gone wrong. My guess is that it's not the LEDs, but probably the driver. There was a little bit of a burning smell when I came down and noticed that this one was no longer on. So let's have a look inside. Uh, one thing to note is that it does actually have a three year warranty, but these are so cheap that it's not even worth trying to send off for a replacement. I end up just buying a new one because uh, it's not really worth the hassle. Now, what they've got is a figure of eight connector on the end and it comes with a cable each time. So I've got tons of these and this allows you to connect it into your lighting circuit as appropriate for your lighting installation. Uh, on the other end is a cap and I think there is another connector on this end which allows you to link them together and it does actually come with a little adapter so if you need an odd length you can just plug some together to get it to the right length and then there's an on off switch um, and that's about it really there's got this uh, nice diffuser it does actually give a really nice light which is why I haven't bothered trying to find another solution because they're quite cheap and they do give quite a nice light output but obviously it would appear that by buying cheap we're having to buy loads of times so let's see what's going on it looks like we might just be able to take the end off here so let's grab a screwdriver so it's looking to be a little bit more, more destructive than i'd hoped so i don't think there's any chance of actually repairing this um but it looks like all of the electronics is actually at the other end so i need to repeat at this end just trying to work out how this would have been assembled i guess this part was soldered on at the very end so I might trim those leads in a moment uh, but the switch must have been soldered in as well because it all seems to have been shoved in down into here past the switch which all of this is one solid piece so there's no way to get into it they must have just shoved it down there and then soldered the switch and clipped it through the chassis just here and we can pull out the driver On the top we've just got a channel with the LEDs in it and then the diffuser. It looks like this will slide off as well so let's remove that and we can get the LEDs out potentially. So none of those immediately look faulty and we can slide that out. So just looking closer at the LED strip you can see it's a 9 watt LED strip, 51 LEDs and the PCB is 8 by 524 millimeters long and it even has some of the approvals uh, UL94V-0 flammability rating we've got the RU thing so um, possibly not quite as cheap as uh, it could be but from what I can see from these first of all I can't see any LEDs that look like they've burnt out or got excessive in terms of temperature but also every single one of them is in series with the other so that's a big long series string uh, 51 white LEDs so with a forward voltage of 3 volts 51 that's 153 volts from the LED driver into this LED strip I'm sort of surprised but I guess um, it kind of makes sense it's just going to be a uh, book regulator driver we'll cl look closer but I doubt this is anything fancy oh actually there's a bit more on it than I would have expected um, so let's have a closer look at this so this does seem to represent a fairly decent LED driver for the application. We've got the mains coming in, we've got a fuse, we've got a MOV to clamp the voltage if we see a over voltage transient. This does actually have the ability to blow this fuse so if the uh, there was a surge or something like that and this started to conduct energy then it would actually blow this fuse. It's placed after that. We've got a capacitor, we've got an inductor, uh, some other capacitors. We've got another inductor here, it's not a transformer. Um, we've got our bridge rectifier on this side and this looks like a book regulator of some kind. We'll have a closer look in a moment but uh, visual inspection I can't see anything wrong on the board or anything that seems like it might have blown up so 
Um, first thing to do, I guess, is just measure this fuse and see if this has gone. Right, so we've got the multimeter here. And let's test this fuse. And no, that is fine. Uh, we'll just check this switch does actually close. Now the switch is fine as well. Um, let's have a closer look at the PCB and see what that IC is actually doing. Here's the driver IC. It's a Shenzhen SI Semiconductors SIC 9552A. And it is a buck regulator. So there's a bridge rectifier. We've got a capacitor to smooth out the rectified DC. And then we've got a RC network here to give us the VDD for the actual driver chip. And then we've got a standard book configuration for the LEDs with the inductor, as we saw, that looked like a transformer on that PCB. And then we've got a couple of current setting resistors. It looks like from the data sheet, this driver chip is good for driving the LEDs anywhere up to 255 milliamps, depending on the forward voltage of the LEDs. It doesn't say what it is up at the 150 volts or so, but at 80, you can drive up to around 155 milliamps. So it's fair to say that it's probably driving these LEDs at about 70 milliamps. But we can have a look at that. Let's have a look at these current sense resistors. So the current setting resistor is our iSense, this one here between pin 8 and pin 1 effectively. Uh, this resistor here is actually for setting the over voltage protection. So basically it shuts down if it detects that the circuit has gone open circuit to protect against extremely high voltages from this inductor. So let's have a look on the PCB. And with pin 1 here, this must be pin 8. So we've got this resistor here. This looks like the current setting resistor, 3R48. So 3.48 ohms. And so using this equation here, we can plug in 400 divided by 2 times 3.48 ohms. And that gives us uh, 57 milliamps of drive current through those LEDs. And that certainly doesn't sound like an unreasonable current for these LEDs, although there is no heat sinking. Uh, but if we do, it was 153 volts, I think, and 57 milliamps. That's 8.7 watts, so pretty close to that 9 watt rating for these. So uh, that all looks fine. I can't actually see anything wrong with the PCB. I've had a close look and visually everything looks fine apart from I can just about see here. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. There we go. It does look like that trace has delaminated slightly onto this inductor. And if you give it a wiggle, you can see that. But it has got continuity to that track. So... Um, Failing that, I guess we're going to have to start testing components. Uh, the only other thing that caught my eye is, um, I did say I didn't see any damage to any of these LEDs, but I just noticed this very end one on the strip. Looks a little bit darker than the rest of them. I don't know if you can see a bit of darkening just at the end here. All the other ones look fairly similar. And then this one has got a dark spot. So maybe we'll just get the multimeter out and test that one. So we're just using the Fluke on diode test mode. Let's see, other way around, Let's see if any of these light up. Yep, so that one's fine, that one's fine. Yep. And no, that one's actually dead. And it's open circuit as well. So maybe the fault is the LED. I would not have expected the LED to have failed. It's normally the driver in these things that fails. Um, let's short that one out and see if it actually makes the LED strip work. Let's see if we can melt some solder onto the pads because I can't really see it. Oh well, this one's disintegrated anyway. Let's just scrape it off with the solder iron. And we'll just put a solder bridge across here if it will take. There we go. You can never do a bridge when you want to. And you always do it when you don't want to. That's always the way. So uh, let's give this a test and see if it now works. So obviously exercising some caution here. Uh, let's turn it on. I've put the current clamp on the DC side off to the LEDs just to confirm that current is about right. But even though we've shorted out an LED, it shouldn't affect the operation in any way because this is a constant current supply. The only thing that it will change very slightly is the duty cycle. But even if we chopped this here and um, connected one of these LEDs, we should still get the same behavior. 
if the driver can actually drive that low duty cycle. Well, let's turn it on. And yeah, that is working fine. 60 milliamps, we haven't quite got enough resolution on here to see any better than that, but 60 milliamps is pretty close to what we said. All the other LEDs are lit, so it was just that one faulty LED, which is a bit of a surprise. I really wasn't expecting a failure on any of these LEDs. I thought it'd be the driver. And, you know, typically what you tend to see on these LED products is that the LEDs obviously meet their lifetime, but the LED driver lets them down. Normally the electrolytic capacitor or something like that has gone. In this case, that wasn't the case. Now, I don't think the location of the faulty LED being right at the end holds any significance whatsoever. In fact, this uh, the end where the LED was damaged is actually the one furthest away from the heat source, the LED driver. So um, yeah, I think it was just a fluke. Whether that's the same problem that I've seen on all of these LED strips, I have no idea, but the position really bears no relevance. It's not, it's a series circuit, so that one isn't going to see anything different to the rest of the LEDs in this strip. So there we go. If you've got any thoughts or comments, leave them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to visit my video sponsor, JLC PCB, if you are thinking about getting some PCBs made. And until next time, thanks for watching.